Yeah, Mr Chairman. Mr Chairman. Uh, I'm going to call the Right Honourable Winston Peters. Uh, the members had two calls and he gets an inverse of two. He has an unlimited number of bursts of two. Thank you, Mr. Uh, over a period of time. Uh, I, I, before, I, before the member starts, I just will explain, because members have been going for the call, I, the, it, it's slightly controversial, because normally a member who has an amendment and is from a, uh, a party of similar size would get priority, but in this case, um, the experienced member, um, who is the leader of a party, uh, will get the call first. The Right Honourable Winston Peters. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. The National Party brought in the RMA but you wouldn't think so today. Uh, this minister and his colleagues have had eight years to modernise it, but you wouldn't think so today. This minister believes that every dysfunction in our economy and our society is due to the ineffectiveness of the outmoded RMA. The fact that, of course, he couldn't mention the massive demand from offshore immigration running at record levels. No, he had to come up with some lousy excuse that it's all to do with the RMA. And then he came up with a whole lot of red herrings, which a lot of people know to be red herrings because they're not in disagreement with him, but he never mentioned what he told everybody when he first saw the shape of this form of legislation, which was that it was brown mail. That it was brown mail. And I wrote to every MP in the National Party this morning and appealed to them as fellow New Zealanders to grasp this last chance to step back from a separatist abyss. This country's very future is on the line in this matter, and on this matter only they, the National Party now, those members of parliament from all around this country who say one thing in their electorate and something here in parliament, only they now have the power to do what is right for the entire country. That is to suspend this bill's passage, go back and fix it up. And that is why I restate New Zealand First's commitment to support comprehensive RMA reform so long as that reform is based on the principle of one law for all. I am sick of hearing Māori members and cultural fellow travellers in this parliament talking about the condition of Māori when in the places like Murupara and Kaikoe and Kawaka no Māori ever has referred to these matters. No, they are concerned about the fundamental four things like housing, health, education and first world jobs. And Marama Fox, if you knew anything about it yourself, then the vote of the Māori Party would not be so pathetic. Can't even get 1% of the vote. It's a tip of a member. Has the arrogance to come here, been here five minutes, expert on everything. Now let me tell you what's going to happen at the next election. Not what happened on the stupid TV1 Colmar Brunton poll that says they're on 4%. No, no. We're straight back to 0.7. That's the latest poll I saw, and it'll get worse. Now, the second thing is that what we've got here is an attempt at parallel government, two forms of government, written into our laws because the Māori Party is trying to win through legislation what they can't get on the ballot box, either in the general seats or the party vote, or for that Māori, matter, the Māori seats. For that matter, the Māori seats. Oh, yes. The Māori Party at the table, they say. Oh, yes, I've seen that before. I've seen people walk into, I've seen people walk into the palace. I've seen the people walk into the palace, sup with the king, and the next day for their people, it's the pie cart. That's Marama Fox. Got some idea that, you, that she has there's the Māoriness of Marama Fox. She's so Māori, she thinks shouting out and interjecting is a Māori way of, uh, of behaving. No, it's not. Miss Fox, go onto the Marae and you'll hear one thing. And it's basically this. It's basically this. When the hen starts crowing, bring its neck. That's the Māori way. And what Māori really means is this, that you'd expect people to hear the other party out. Oh, oh, oh OK, here we go. Can't take it. Order. A point of order has been called, and I'm going to warn Craig Foss that when we're in this process, he zips it up in the vernacular. Uh, point of order, Mr Chair. Marama I Fox. believe that what I just uh, heard was um, nothing short of a threat. A threat that if you I, speak I, I, too no, much, no, member, you we'll get your member, neck... Mem member, member will resume her seat. I think we we're all listening and we all understood, and I regard that point of order as being frivolous. Really? The Right Honourable... Thank you, Mr Speaker. This planning is based on the colour 
of one's skin. Or dare I say it, looking at some people who claim to be Maori, not the colour of the skin, but the ability to, even to the fraction of one in 512, say that they've got a Maori ancestor. Mr Speaker, this is a disaster. It's a disaster because the condition socially and economic of Maori deserves far better than this. But I know that there are a handful, the elite, the bureaucracy, who've come to this parliament making all sorts of demands, and yet those, pe those same people can't even fill a hall anywhere in any town in this country. Can't fill one hall anywhere, any town in this country. Be in no doubt that planning and environmental law, just like our judicial system, must be colourblind. And my party, New Zealand First, refuses to support separatism as this appalling piece of legislation represents because it is such a retrograde step. For goodness sake, if you watch that great civil rights series in the United States called Eyes on the Prize, every black person in the civil rights movement wanted to break down the walls to white institutions, not start their own. And that's why they end up with a black, Mr Speaker. Right and Winston that's why they end up with a black president before anybody thought it was possible. But they never took off their, their eyes off the prize that equalities born of effort and sacrifice and the best possible education and employment that any society can deliver. And it's not based on different rules, based on the skin and ancestry. So just where has nationals road to Ngarawahi a conversion into the European branch of the Maori Party come from? How did that happen? Oh On this road to Damascus or Ngarawahia, what happened here? Oh my God, she says, I'll tell you what, when you say, oh my God, how many Maori have demanded, how many Maori have demanded a separate planning system? Can't answer. Not a whisper, not a word, not a syllable, not a sound. Gets asked the most basic of questions, she can't answer. What research have members here today done with Maori that they want more separatism? Last year, at the another Rotary Club at Orowa, I warned what the National Party government was doing, and that was kowtowing to the Maori Party's brown mail. And here we are now. This most excellent problem of ministers, Nick Smith, described that speech as typical Winston Peters, mischief-making. He, of course, coined the phrase about this. Brown mailing, he called it. But all of a sudden, heavy as he is, for reasons I cannot understand, and nor can hundreds of thousands of formerly national voters understand. Why, Mr Smith, are you selling these people out? Why, Mr Smith, are you going down the road with Marama Fox who's been here five minutes and can't get anybody in a telephone booth to follow what she thinks? Can't get a telephone booth full to follow what she thinks? Decisions made by councils are going to be overridden. And bearing in mind, Mr Smith described my warnings last year's mischief, what did we learn on the 6th of March, just another day which will live in democratic infamy in this country? Iwi will be given approval rights in resource consents and the ongoing monitoring of consents once they are issued. This is to be embedded within the National Resource Legislation Amendment Bill right now as mana whakohono arohe iwi participation arrangements. Just like that. So an unelected bureaucracy will not just get a say on district unity and regional plans, but consents and compliance too, and for every year, the same process will be followed by them. So here is one hint for the future. Say a person's got a farm or a business in Auckland. They need to apply for a new discharge consent. Auckland Council gives you the tick, but then one or more of the 13 Auckland iwi Yes, apparently now we've got a baker's dozen of iwi in Auckland. Also need to be consulted but start making noises that they'll object. The farmer meets with them and they demand mitigation. What does mitigation mean? Well, you can read that as a koha for consent. A koha for consent. That's brown mail. And then every year, regulars, clockwork, council inspections are followed by 13 iwi inspections. True or false? It's a fact. False. It's in the law. It's written there. These inspections become nothing more than a protection racket the mafia, ma the mafia also would be proud of, and it's fully, totally, if this bill goes through, legal. Mr Smith, if this bill passes after the 23rd of uh, September this year, we in New Zealand First 
are going to repeal it. Get that clear right now. Whether you're an overblown minister, or some planning officer downtown, or some planning lawyer downtown, there's going to be a vortex and a limbo coming right now if this bill passes, because we intend to repeal it. And repeal it we will. This is a dystopian future national is creating through its seriously flawed resource legislation amendment bill. And by taking the K out of Kiwi, national used to stand for something, but not now. Not 13 layers of a new bureaucracy being added to the Auckland region alone. And as for the business of water, he uses every lousy diversion and red herring to try and excuse his appalling behaviour as a minister. Now, I know that the National Party and the backbenchers and elsewhere think they should get rid of the Salvatross, and now. But he's the Prime Minister's mate, so they're both going to go down. That's the consequence, Mr Smith. I know something. I was campaigning for that member back in 1990, trying to explain why a 23-year-old should get into Parliament. And what a waste of time it was, Mr Speaker. Can I just finish off my speech? I just finish this off. Yeah, no, no, members had, the members had two calls. Yeah, but there's a lot of enthusiasm for uh, this yeah, message. The member, the, member, the member can have another go later, but you're only allowed two at a time, according to the standing orders. <laughs> well, I move. I move. To, Fox. I move. Here. Yeah. Uh, well, that's a little bit rich, a retrograde step, because exactly what this member has described 